Hi, Jane. All right, guys, uh, whoever is able to sit crisscross applesauce, get up right now on stage. Right now. That includes all the undergrads. Get up here. Anyone who's under 27, get up here. Because we, we, we're broadcasting live on Facebook, we want this to be a, uh, a really, really cool happening. I'm going to adjust the phone here. Hold on.
seat, sit down, relax, relax. All right, it's just right on. Yep. Um, uh, uh. It is such a thrill to be back at at, uh, at ATW, and uh, we're Gary Elwell and I. We we were here when it was uh, the Eastern Trombone Workshop back in the day. Man, how many folks remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I want to thank Sam Woodhead again and, and Chris Brand again, Craig Lawinger, Brad Leisha, Jeff Keller, and the great Tony Knocker. Oh my gosh, what a thrill! And um, our the Army Band's leader and commander, Colonel Andrew Esch, for giving us this opportunity. And, sweetie, you don't have to hold that the whole time. <laughs> this is my wife, Holly Waters, ladies and gentlemen, my hero, my true love. <laughs> oh, 
Not only is she beautiful, but she's also very, very calm under crazy circumstances. And what a great mom. I love you with all my heart, my darling. Mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs> I owe my entire life with Holly to an open door. Um, it must have been about, gosh, 20... Five years ago, uh, I was auditioning for the Army Band, and I tried to get in. Some of y'all know this story. I tried to get in uh, to, to audition, and every door in the, in the band building was locked except one. And that was their first mistake. So I snuck in and put on my suit that I was going to be auditioning in and started running excerpts all night long the night before the audition. So I got used to the space. Had I not done that, I would have been really, really nervous. So thank goodness for that open door. You know, they say, Yogi Berra said one time, if you get to a fork in the road, take it. <laughs> That's right. Oh, sweetie. <laughs> okay, what are we going to do next? Oh, we're going to do Key West Waltz. All right, this is awesome. Uh, everyone needs to get a copy of this lead sheet right here. So please, we need librarians to, uh, to come down and pass them out. And there's a reason for this. My wife uh, gave me a two-day pass back in November. And uh, she said, well, sweetie, just go down to Key West and, and write melodies. So I said, all right, that sounds like a good plan. Thank you, darling. So what I did, I went on Airbnb. And they didn't have any uh, rooms available, but they did have a boat that was available through Airbnb. So I got on the bow of this boat and started writing melodies, singing them into my phone and playing them on the phone. And uh, so we're going to be doing a little bit of this. But we need to think about something. You've probably met a whole bunch of people here at the workshop. And there's different levels of getting to know somebody. There's, some, you know, there's a level whenever you first meet someone, you look at them in the eyes, shake their hand, and learn their name, and try and remember their name. Uh, that's one level of getting to know someone. Maybe later in the day you get to go over to the exhibit booth or go out to uh, maybe lunch and talk about trombones and mouthpieces and politics and, uh, well, maybe not politics, but uh, art, movies, that's another way. Or maybe later that night you get a chance to have some dinner with them, maybe a glass of milk or two. And uh, so you're gradually getting to know someone. But you know, what really brings us close together, I think, is sharing melodies. Um, so we're going to be singing this melody here. Uh, at some point, we're going to go completely a cappella. And if you don't know someone right next to you, I don't want you to hold this sheet of paper by yourself. I want you to share holding the piece of paper. All right? Almost like we're in church. We're going to get to know each other really, really well. Okay, so when I was staying at this... Uh, when I was staying on this boat at the Airbnb in Key West, I had to get out on this uh, six-foot dinghy. My host brought me out there. So we'd be bumping along. Oh, it would be crazy. And then we'd crawl into the boat. And I got to sit on the bow of the boat, and that's when I felt like I was the king of the world, you know, like, it's like a Leonardo DiCaprio on, on Titanic. So th this melody is, is into two sections. The first section is the ride out in the dinghy. The second section is standing on the bow of the boat, playing trombone, and just having a ball. Okay? So we're going to play this a little bit right now. Aww. Hey, that's okay. We have three kids. They're uh, 8, 9, and 10. <laughs> we had three in diapers at one point.
Okay, now what we're going to do, what we're going to do, what we're going to do now is practice it one time and get your virtual trombones up. All right, get in playing position. This is treble clef. I'm going to play the melody one time through, and you're going to move your, your slide as we're doing this. It's a great way for ear, for ear training. I have my students do this all the time. Then we're going to drop out, and we're going to do an entire chorus singing. All right? What's shaking, Mr. Stoneback? <laughs> Rob Stoneback, ladies and gentlemen. This is old home week. I love this. I love this. Oh. Carl Fontana is one of my heroes, and I'm sure he's all of our heroes. Uh, an amazing creative force. Uh, he His time was absolutely incredible. He came down to... Uh, uh, LSU back in 1992, and I had the tremendous honor to, to play a, a tune with him. But what I was really uh, blown away with every single time, whenever there was a, an a cappella section, you could set your watch to his solos. And he was so relaxed about it. As trombonists, we, all, we have a tendency to get really, really uptight a lot. Oh, my goodness, am I doing this correctly? And then your shoulders start to get tight, and you start sweating. But think about this. We need to be more relaxed at the beginning of our practice sessions than we are or at the end of our practice sessions than at the beginning of our practice sessions. We need to get slowly and more gradually more and more relaxed. Same thing at, with a concert. At the end of this recital, I fully expect to be able to go to sleep in about 20 seconds. Okay, We're just having fun here. And that was exactly the way Carl Fontana was. When I, when I first met him, he came up and he was chewing gum. Hi, Harry. How's it going? And that gum stayed with him in his mouth through the rest of the day and through the concert while he was playing. <laughs> that shows you how relaxed he was. So we're going to do one of his favorite tunes off the great Fontana. Uh, it might as well be spring. Just right on. Uh, uh, uh.
just the snapping now. Oh yeah. <laughs> Just a regular trombone recital <laughs> with a with a build in the rhythm section. You guys are amazing. Okay, uh, my wife and I got this um, this Winnebago last year. It was two years ago. It's a mobile practice room in a family adventure uh, wagon, and uh, we we go on all these these crazy outings, and um, we get some pretty good uh, inspirational ideas. I'm not going to say this is one of them, but <laughs> I woke up, we were, I think we were in Texas, about to go into uh, the Paladura Canyon, and I woke up one morning, and our kids were fixing themselves cereal, and I leaned over, on, and, I, and I said, uh, hey guys, wouldn't it be great if um, John Coltrane uh, played Giant Steps along with something that maybe James Taylor did, maybe Fire and Rain? Wouldn't that be kind of cool to meld those two together? And our kids were sitting there eating their Frosted Flakes, you know, eight, nine, and ten, and they said, Dad, everyone knows that those root movements are much too far apart. If you stack them, you're going to get a, an augmented fifth, and it's just not going to coalesce harmonically. Everybody knows that, Dad. <laughs> they didn't really say that. <laughs> but they did roll their eyes. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a little bit of fire and train. Get it, John Coltrane? Ah! Um, <laughs> So whenever we get to the uh, the giant step section, and Graham, you need to get your, your horn out and, and play on this, baby. <laughs> That's right. The amazing Graham Breedlove, ladies and gentlemen, a true legend, the raging Cajun. 
So whenever you whenever you hear the uh, the crazy root movements for uh, giant steps on on fire and train, just raise your hand or just just give us a a, a little nod. Yes. Ah, our, our our kids say you're doing the parent eye talk, aren't you? Well, let's do that right now.
That's the Winnebago talking. Okay, all right. It's, it's time now for the, a standard piece of trombone literature. Um, and I'm sure that you've done this in your, uh, in your undergraduate lessons. I, cer I certainly did. Um, Layla by Eric Clapton. I know Graham did. What a, what a tremendous audience.
And again, a, a big thanks to uh, Sam Woodhead, Chris ba Brannigan, the guys working sound back there. There's nothing like working with the pros. Craig Lauinger, Brad Leja, and uh, Jeff Keller. Give them a round of applause, please. Yes. And Jen Malley up there doing a great job in, uh, what is it, uh, public affairs. Hey, Jen. She can't hear us. Maybe she can. All right, we're going to do uh, one more. It's a... Uh, Brad Castles? Oh, for heaven's sakes. Why, how dare you change your name on me like that? <laughs> Brad Castles, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, now we're going to do a, a we're going to close with a, a beautiful love ballad that uh, you've probably heard several times before. And uh, regardless of who you're sitting next to, squeeze their hand. And look at them and lovingly and say, I'm so glad we're here together. <laughs> One more time, Tony Knocker, ladies and gentlemen, amazing. <laughs> what an inspiration. Thank you. 
Tony Nogger, Jeff Keller, Brad Castles, Craig Lawinger. <laughs>